Hey guys, welcome back to building a basic website from scratch. After last lesson, we created our a grid system that we're going to be able to use throughout our website. Now the last piece or last couple of pieces that we have to build is going to be our navigation and our footer. Our footer we're going to create it in the next video is going to be very short and simple since we're going to use the grid system that we already created. And uh, for the navigation, that's what we're going to focus in this in this lesson. Um, this lesson, we're going to focus on background uh, attributes, as well as we're going to look at some um, position absolute and relative as well as we're going to look at a little bit of JavaScript and uh, mainly it's just going to be a quick overview uh, later on as we develop a couple of uh, very specialized um, interactions on the side like a carousel and as like say FAQ component and whatnot that will be a lot easier later on to explain more through JavaScript this is just to kind of get some interactions like opening and closing the menu on the mobile device so let's go ahead and get started as you remember this is kind of how our site is going to look it is looking like right now with our grid system our typography we have all these things in place we're very 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 close to start creating the different pages in our site uh, for each one of these uh, categories here. Now let's go ahead and start uh, working on our header area. If you want to, of course, we can always come up here and uh, let's go ahead and we're going to minimize our main because we really don't need to get that information there. Okay. So now that we're going to focus on the navigation, let's go ahead and start adding some markup inside of the header area. Uh, and markup or tag, we're going to use this nav tag, which is something that gets added, um, was added on HTML5, just to let the, you know people know that this is an actual uh, navigation within our site. It is within the header of our site as well. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's go ahead and we're going to remove this paragraph and we're going to add our logo. So we're going to do an anchor tag with a class of um, navbar brand, okay, and then here let's go ahead and add the name of the site, which in my case I am a, I'm gonna call it building a basic website from scratch. However you want to call it, you're able to call that there. So you have now the, your nav brand. That's what we're going to use. We're going to also create a button as well within the site um, so that we can actually make it toggle open and close when we go to the to the mobile responsive. So let's go to create a button with a class of navbar toggler with a type of button. Of course, we want to let this be, the the browser know that this is just a button, and with a data target of pound main navigation. What this is referring to is going to be, um, and let's go ahead and here, just just go ahead and do something like bars. We'll we'll add uh, the graphic for this in just a little bit. So what this data target we're going to use it in JavaScript is to be able to target this specific element down here. If you remember when we talked a little bit about um, IDs and classes, we talked about the classes are usually represented with a period in front of it, but IDs are represented with a hashtag or a pound sign. Remember that we talked about the difference between a class and an ID. The ID is meant to be um, very independent and very unique um, selector. So for example, say like a social security number, something that would identify one person only versus say, for example, a class of students where it would select all the students in a class. Maybe we the idea will be the name of the student, like John Smith. Then John Smith will be the only student in that class that we're selecting. So same same idea here. We're trying to be as specific as we can as we can possibly be. So what we're going to do is now we're selecting this here, and we're going to use it in JavaScript. But what we're going to do here is in our on order list, we're going to add the ID of main navigation. Notice that I did not add the pound sign in front of this, but I added it here. You'll see that later on as we later on as we are working on the JavaScript and how that plays out. We're also going to add a class of navbar 
down here as well for our uh, um, on order list that holds all of our content in here. Now, one thing that we're also going to change is that we have this list item and we have this nested list inside of this. Now, what we're going to do in this list item is we're going to add a class of dropdown so that we know that this is going to be a dropdown. Now, the only thing in the, when we use a dropdown is that it won't work as a link. This would only work as a link um, if it wasn't a dropdown because we're going to add a click event listener to this specific anchor tag so that when a user clicks on it, then it opens up the navigation underneath it. Again, we're trying to be proactive and think about mobile first. Most users that visit a website visit it through a mobile site, through the mobile browser. So you definitely want to make sure that you're working on that first. And that's why when even when we worked on our responsive grid system, we started with mobile first and then we started moving up to, you know, mobile uh, landscape, uh, mobile, uh, I'm sorry, tablet and then desktop. So just kind of something for you to keep in mind. And we're going to do the same thing here. Um, so if we go to back to the browser, not a lot has changed here. We do have the different name here, and this is going to be an anchor tag. Let's go back here. Um, so we added an anchor tag with a class of navbar brand. I did forget to add the href here, and we're going to add it to the index.html. Again, we're telling it that we want anytime that they click on this, um, brand for the site, they, it takes them to the um, index.html page, okay? So we're going to refresh that, and that looks a little bit better. We have this button that says bars in there, and we're going to replace that as well. Um, so, and then we have the navigation here, and again, this projects link no longer uh, clicks or takes you anywhere. This actually just opens up this, this list of projects. And again, this is mainly made for me to show you how to do this. If you don't need to have a drop down the, and you just want to have, say, like a projects page, then you can do that there as well. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And um, we could have a projects or here we can even just call it list of projects list of projects and then so that way we can have projects.html whenever we create it projects and then projects or instead of list list of projects recent projects all right so we're going to refresh that. Now, if I click on projects, it will take me there. If I click on recent projects, it will display the most recent projects that we've worked on, right? That's the idea behind this. So let's go ahead and do the following. Um, we have this section called bars, but ideally when you go to a site, you have this kind of like hamburger look, um, it, like button that you click on it. It has three bars. And when you click on it, then it opens up the navigation. So we could go the route of creating those three bars using a, um, a PNG, for example, but we're not going to do that. We're trying to be as as quickly and as responsive as we can possibly be and make it as um, as adaptable as we can possibly do it as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a font library. Um, if you remember when we did typography, we added a fonts family from um, directly from uh, Google Fonts. This time we're going to use something different, a different library called Font Awesome. If you go to fontawesome.com, then you'll see this uh, homepage. If you don't have an account, you'll have to enter your email and select it and sign up. And then once you have done com uh, the completion of your sign up, then you'll be able to go and you'll have a, have a way to create a specific um, kit for you to use. What you're going to do is you're going to copy this script that has this kit and then you're going to paste it up here on the head of your HTML. Um, I would recommend pasting it underneath the styles for your site 
just so that you know the styles get loaded first and then the script I would also, if you need to pause this video to go through that process, please feel free to do so. I do have the paid uh, membership for this service, so I do have access to other um, items that you may not. However, um, I will show you on how to get the specific elements that you need and how you'll be able to implement it on your, on your, on your site. So. After you've done that, I assume that you have already gone through the process, you've already gotten the script, and you have added onto your page. If you go from there, then you can go into what it's called icons. And then inside of icons, we're going to search, search for the script called bars. And then you can click on bars. And now this icon gives you these definitions here. And you can select the one that says FAS, FA bar. So where, if you click on this, it actually copies it for you. You can see on the right hand side which ones are free. The ones that say pro are the ones that um, you would actually have to pay for the membership to be able to use those. But the ones that say that don't have anything underneath that says pro, then those are free for use for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to go to bars and then we're going to replace that with this icon that was created here. And then you'll see right now, if you go back to the browser, go to our tab and we'll refresh, then it automatically gives us these bars here. So we're going to style that up as well. And I think so far we are good. We're going to do a little bit more with Font Awesome, so don't close it out um, because we're going to add that for um, our uh, drop down. We're going to add an arrow to open or to close um, the. Um, to show that it's open and show that it's closed with, with the drop down. So let's go ahead and start adding some styles here. I will also provide the image that I have um, that I'll be using for the logo. It's going to be on the description below. So please feel free to go down there and click in and download it so that you can get access and, and use it in your implementation. So if you remember, we have our, our three different folders. We have our JavaScript folder, uh, we have our image folder, and our CSS folder. Now within these, we have different files. So the CSS has the style.css that we've been working on. And underneath the image, you can load the image that I provided for you guys, which is an SVG. The reason why I'm using an SVG is because it's a vector graphic, meaning that it, first of all, is very low as far as weight goes. So it's very minimal. And then it also is scalable. So I don't know if you have ever gone to a website where the image that you're looking at looks a little bit pixelated, like it's not sharp enough. So if you have trouble with that, especially when it comes to logos, I would always suggest using SVG and I'll show you how I implement it so that you can um, add it to your site and actually make it look really, really, really good. Um, we also have a JavaScript folder, which we don't have anything yet. We are going to add our JavaScript app inside of it today in this lesson. So. Let's go ahead and real quick go into our styles and right underneath our grid system that we created, let's go ahead and add our, our common, our usual comment here. So header styles and then end of header styles. There you go. And because we're going to be working on these styles and we have a lot of uh, grid system styles that we had, we added last time, I'm going to minimize those so that it's easier to kind of go to the very top and, and kind of navigate through that. Um, and I think that's it as far as what we can do to minimize, but it'll make it a little bit easier to kind of scroll up and down if we need to. So now let's go ahead and look at this. So we have our header and we have our navigation right here. Now we also have our um, brand, our button, and we have our main navigation. So since we're always working from mobile first, let's go ahead and make this smaller and make it look just like if it was going to be um, an actual mobile 
um, responsive you know, um, browser. So let's go down here and go to styles and we're going to select our nav bar brand. And let's go ahead and do that. So it's a class of nav bar brand, which we're going to be selecting. That's our anchor tag. And what we're going to do is we're going to say display block. If you remember, display block uh, allows for that whatever element that we're selecting to occupy the full space that it's available for it to use. See, that's why it moved that button to the next line, right? And then we're going to also say overflow hidden. What this is going to do is that if there's any overflow that is going to move, it's going to actually hide it rather than um, continue on the same line or pushing it to the next line. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to also set up a background, uh, set up background styles. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up a, the, our background image as our logo. So we're going to do background image. And then here's how we select our background image. We're going to type in URL, open and close parenthesis, and then quotes. If you look at this, folder structure, we have our style.css right here. And what we need to do is we need to go up one level for our folder structure and go into the image folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to do dot dot. That means we want you to go one folder up in the directory forward slash image, we're going to select that folder called image forward slash and then the name of the file. The good thing is that Visual Studio Code actually allows you to kind of give you the path on how to do this. All right, hope you're caught up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that the image does not repeat. If we have that there and we refresh our browser, you see that it repeats everywhere. So we don't want it to repeat. So what we can do is we can do background repeat and we can say no repeat. We also have different options as far as repeat X on the X axis or repeat Y on the Y axis, but in our case, we're going to say no repeat. If we refresh this, then now we can see that it's actually not repeating anymore. The next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at this and make sure that we can set up a position for this background. So let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and do a width of say 100% and a height of say 50, like 200 pixels, okay? Just so that you can see it. You can see that, that the image is showing up and is on the very top. You could actually do the background uh, position to be center, for example. And then at that point, it will center within here. You can also make it go to the bottom, stay on the top. So usually what we, and it takes two variables. It takes both X and both Y for the position. So what we're going to do in our case for this background is going to be zero, zero. What this is saying is we want it to be on the point of origin on the top left, zero, zero. So if we repeat, refresh that, then you can see that now the background image is in that top corner right there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do background size. And here in background size, we could do something like cover. And if you look at the size of the background, look at what happens. It expands as long as it can cover the full height and width of the background. But in our case, we want to make sure that our logo is displayed all of the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do contain. In contain, what contain does is that it tries to adjust either through the height or the width, depending on whatever it's available to try to fit that space there. Let me go ahead and kill this width and height from here. And now you can see how it brought it back up. So we have the background size. And the last thing that we, we need to do is also do the background color. We could do something like adding a background color on top of the background image. See, like what we did pink, but in our case, we don't want to distort any of the changes there. So we're going to do background color transparent. 
these are the, the five main um, background um, styles that you may use as you're building a site. Um, I will have a, this um, CS, um, CSS link down below on the description so you can explore a little bit more about backgrounds. Something really interesting that most people may not even know is that you can actually layer backgrounds on top of other backgrounds on top of other backgrounds and have that and align them and, and arrange them as you would like to using and these different categories here these different uh, attributes right here now I personally, just like what you've saw, seen me do with uh, the border styles, I like to kind of keep it all closed and make it easier for somebody to read rather than have multiple attributes. So what you can do is you can actually set up something called background instead of having each one of those independently, and then you can uh, put them all together. So again, the first one is the a position for that for, uh, for the image or the location of that image. If you want the image to repeat or not repeat, the position of the background. Now here's something interesting. If you want to use background size, Notice that I have those two zero zero. Make sure you add that forward slash right next to that zero without any spaces, okay? And then cover just like that without any spaces and then transparent. So that's this right here. This one line can replace all of these other styles right there. If you notice right there, cover. Oh, sorry, it's, it's supposed to be contained, no wonder. All right, perfect. So now we have our background style here. Now, we would like to see, for example, this uh, logo right here not have that text in front of it. So how will we get rid of the text? Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So what we're going to do, CSS also has this um, attribute called a uh, property called text indent. And then here, what you can do is indent your text. Say, for example, say if you wanted to indent it one REM, then see that it moves your text almost like you're tabbing, right? Now, what we want to do is indent it long enough where it goes off the screen and you don't see it. Again, that's why this overflow hidden plays really well with that. So now I, where, what I'm going to do is text and then negative 99999 pixels. So go away of the screen. And when I refresh the screen, now you can see that it's no longer there. Okay. That's how you replace. And instead of just having an image as your, uh, as your logo, you will have actual text that search engines can get that information and be able to use it to actually describe the site a little bit better rather than just using an image. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we actually want this logo and this button to be aligned next to each other. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add some styles to this button right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this class of nav bar toggler. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the border. So we're going to do border zero none, if I can spell it right. And then here we're going to change the background color. And I'm just going to pick one of these colors that we have down here. Let me pick this H H1 back uh, color. I'm also going to change the text color. You see that. So if we refresh this, it removed the border and it also made it a little bit smaller, but now it's a little bit hard to read. So let's go ahead and change that color to white, which is FFF. If we save that and refresh, now you see that. And then what we're going to do also is we're going to add a width of two REM, a height of two REM, a uh, font size of one REM and a line height of one EM. See, it made it look a little bit more square, which now gives us the opportunity to add also a height for this element up here. So we can do a height of two REM. 
See, it makes it a little bit bigger because I want this logo to be about the same height as this element right below it. Okay. Now what we can do, uh, we also, if you notice when we go over the, the button, it doesn't really have that cursor, uh, that pointer that tells us like that something can be clicked. So just that micro interaction, we're going to add it as well. Even though this will only be available on um, tablet, just in case uh, a user has their browser um, kind of squished like I do, then they'll be able to see that as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So the, in order to change that is you will use the cursor and tag here, uh, attribute here, and then we're going to do pointer. And then now when we hover over it, then now you have that in place. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to move this button to the right of this element right here. And then we also want this navigation back here, the, the menu down here, to span the full width of this element right here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, if you notice, the parent container for all of our navigation elements is this nav tag. So guess what? If you heard me say parent container, that probably means that we're going to use Flexbox. So let's go ahead and set up Flexbox now. We're going to say display Flexbox, right? And then of course, because we want it to be in a row, right? From left to right, we're going to do flex flow row wrap. And then we're going to align everything to the top. So align items flex start, align content, flex start. And we do want everything to be from left to right. Um, so we're gonna do uh, justify content, flex start. However, this one we're going to change it and you'll see why. So if we refresh this now, everything's kinda going to the left because we haven't really assigned the, the um, the flex sizing for each one of the individual elements. So let's say that the nav bar, right? The nav bar, we want it to be flex of zero, zero because we don't want it to grow or shrink. And let's go ahead and calculate that. Say it's gonna be 100% minus three REM, okay? That's because again, we set up a width of two REM for a nav bar toggler. So we wanna keep that as well in mind. And I just wanted to add a little bit extra space there. And just like what we did with the um, grid system, we're going to add a max width of that same amount there. If we refresh that there, then that is showing up now and you'll see that this is clickable and then when you get to this area where the button is going to be, then that's where it's that's actually gonna go to. So let's go over here. And uh, so we have Flexbox, Row Wrap, Flex Start. Let's go ahead and switch this real quick and instead of justify content, let's do a space between. All right. We'll look at this in just a little bit. Okay, so space between, and of course down here, our nav bar toggler. We also need to give it a uh, flex, and we don't want it to grow or shrink of two REM, and a max width of two REM. And if we refresh that, okay, we'll have to look at this. Um, give me a second, please. Let's take a look at this. We have nav, nav bar, brand, flex, display. Nobody corrected me. Display flex. That's why it wasn't showing up. All right. Perfect. So now we have this navigation here. Now everything kind of looks a little bit cramped and I don't like it that way. So let's go ahead and add our header and add a little bit of padding to it so that it's not cramped. So header, and we're going to add a padding of one REM. 
If you notice, I'm not just throwing everything to the bottom of the styles. I tried as I'm working through CSS to kind of keep it in the same order that it appears on the markup. So that's why I have header above nav and then nav above all these other different elements that we're going to style. Um, just so again, keep that in mind as you're working through CSS. Now that we added that padding, that looks a lot better. It looks a little bit cleaner. And again, we still have that button in there and because this is responsive and it's still 100%, uh, we can still click on that button and click on the navigation in uh, the, the logo, I'm sorry. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually um, add some styles to the main navigation, which we called nav bar. So let's go ahead and go down here and add a class of nav bar and let's do flags 00, zero uh, 100% and then max width of 100% as well because we wanted to spend the full width of this element and let's go ahead and also add some other styles here so let's go ahead and do nav bar comma if you remember, this nav bar is actually the UL here, the on order list. We also want to select the nav bar UL right there, and then the nav bar LI. So we're selecting the, the, the nested list that we have down here, as well as all of our list items here. And we're going to do a list style type none so that we can remove all of our bullet points that we have here. And now we're going to get rid of all of these different spaces that we have in there. So we're just going to zero out our padding and our margin so that they're all zeroed out and that it's looking great in there. All right. So now the next thing that we need to do is we, we need to make these look kind of like buttons. And if you notice, they're only clickable right where you have that link, not really outside of that. So we want to make them look a little bit more like buttons, like what you usually would see on a, a responsive navigation, right? So let's go ahead and add those uh, styles there. Okay, so we have our main navigation, and then we have our LI and our anchor tags. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do nav bar, anchor. So we can select those. And of course, we're going to select a, the, all the different sub uh, pseudo classes. So the link, active, um, hover, visited. We're going to add those there as well and visit it. If you don't remember this, please feel free to revisit our typography video. In that video, I covered each one of these in um, some somewhat detailed in there. So let's go ahead and make sure that we they spend the full width. In order to spend the full width, guess what? We're going to use display block overflow hidden. Okay. And now if you see, I, I have home and then I move all around, all over to the side, then you can see kind of how they move. And you might see it better on your screen, but they kind of have that little roll over color that kind of hints that there's a change in the, um, the year of, on what you're hovering over. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some padding and let's go ahead and add some our 0.5 REM padding to the top and bottom and 0.75 REM to the left and right just to give them a little bit more space. Again, keep in mind, this is going to be on the mobile device. So you want to give them enough space for them to be able to click on these different buttons without clicking in, in the ones that they don't want to click on. Um, the next thing, we want to remove that under line because they it doesn't look quite good on mobile so text decoration is going to be set up to none okay perfect so now we have each one of these um, elements and they're looking just like what we have as far as um, mobile devices go now let's go ahead and take a look at the following we have this drop down element 
and then we have an order list underneath it. So let's go ahead and add some styles to that as well. So nav bar, drop down UL, and let's go ahead and change that background color. Actually, let's change that directly on the on the anchor tags themselves. So we're going to do um, A. And then, of course, we're going to use our selectors. So again, active, hover, visit it. And of course, I need to fix that. Perfect. And let's go ahead and change the background color. And let's do it with something like, say, this one down here, the one for H2. If you notice and refresh, now we have that background color to each one of those. And again, you can see that. Let's go ahead and also change the color of the text to white. See right there. And then if you want to get a little bit fancy, we could also do, for example, I'm going to select this color for the H3. And then we could go something like this, nav bar, drop down, UL, A, hover, so the anchor tag hover, and this, we can change the background color for that specific style so that when a user refreshes or they go in there and they hover over these elements, then it will show that little color right there. Let them know what they, they are selecting on the drop down menu. Okay. If we wanted to do that on the other one as well, we could do that as well. I just have to add that style yourself. Okay. So we have now these styles, they're pretty much done. If you expand this, you know, then you can see this is the same style. This is going to be our base style here. And as you can see, then we're pretty much done with some of these stylings that we have available. Now let's go ahead and add some micro interactions that will help our, um, our navigation look a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this bigger first, and then we're going to go into font awesome. And we're going to look for this, um, this specific icon called carrot. C-A-R-E-T. And with the carrot, then you have the carrot up and the carrot down. Again, to display when an element is open, when an element is closed. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to use this selection that says Unicode. However, first, what I would suggest doing is clicking on this um, copy HTML, I class, FAS, copy that first. And then say, for example, right click on which one? Let's right click here. And then inspect element. And then right above the span, I usually, what I will do is I will go ahead and do a, as edit as HTML and just add that carrot right above the span. Okay. See that I added that, that same code right there, the F A S F A carrot down. The reason why I'm doing that is just to make sure that you have access to the library and you know exactly what they're calling it. So if you look on the right now, or depending on where you have your styles, then you'll see that it says font family, font awesome five pro. That's what it's showing up for me. If it doesn't, if it shows something different for you, please feel free to select whatever they are providing for you to be able to use. And then you have also the font weight 900. So just kind of keep a note of that. We're going to use this in just a little bit. So going back to our markup right here we have our style so we want to be able to select our drop down our anchor tag that is a child direct child of our drop down and add that after its label itself so let's go ahead and do that real quick so we're going to select 
up here and we're going to go to nav bar, drop down, but I want it to be an immediate child. I don't want it to select all of them. Let me show you what happens if we just do anchor, okay? And then we're going to use our trusted after. I believe I explained this in one of the first videos if you would like to rewatch those. Um, I will also have a, um, a link to after and these pseudo selectors on the description below. So here what we're going to do is we're going, going to use content and we're going to paste this Unicode right here, the F0D7, okay? We're gonna do a backslash, paste that F0D7, semicolon at the end, of course, and we're going to add the font family, font family, which in this case is Font Awesome Pro, and then I'm going to add the weight to be 900, just like what we see on the example. So this will be the font weight, okay? We have this style here. If we go to the browser, if we refresh, now you can see that it added into all of these different anchor tags. Again, because we're saying, we're selecting the nav bar and the dropdown and any and all anchor tags that are within the dropdown, will be selected by using this, just the anchor tag um, tag itself. So tag name itself. So in order to select just a very specific, the child of direct immediate child of dropdown, we need to do this greater than sign. And I believe we've used it in the past. And if you refresh now, it only shows up here on this element itself. So, now, the next thing we want to do is we want to move this all the way to the right because, again, that's usually where we see it. So let's go ahead and do position. And we're going to use the position to be absolute. And then we're going to do uh, right zero. I will have a link also to positions um, as well so that you can read up on that. So once you actually set up a position to be absolute, you can use top, right, bottom, left, uh, and it will be absolute to, at this case, it's actually set up to the browser. So we, if, for example, if we were to do right zero and then we can do bottom, say for example, zero, you can see that it moved all the way to the bottom on the right. But we really want it to be only staying within this element itself. So let's go ahead and remove that. And let's go ahead and make sure that all of our elements, if they're not necessarily being overridden by saying position absolute, that we make sure and let them know this is going to be a position, say, relative, um, so that everything is relative to each other. So what we're going to do, we're going to scroll to the very top. We're going to go back to where we had the star before and after and box sizing border box. And we're going to say position relative okay now that we've done that notice that this was outside first and now it moved inside here if we go back to the bottom to where we have our styles for our header and if you notice down here if we were to do say for example bottom zero look that it won't come all the way down here anymore we refresh it it only moves to the bottom of that element that we selected okay so again it helps it if you are going to do something absolute, then make sure that whatever element that is surrounding it, that is working with it, that it has that position relative surrounding it. And that's why I like to always set it up up here as a, as a global selector, just to make sure that there's, um, that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing in all the elements. All right, so now that we have this, we have this right here, right? Showing if it would, that it is open. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we need to actually define it to be open. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and close this out. So nav bar, drop down, UL. 
Do I have any styles for that specifically yet? I don't. So let me move that down here. And then we're going to do display none. We refresh. Perfect. And we also, what we're going to do is we're going to change this from the down arrow to the top arrow whenever it's closed. So let's go ahead and the default value will be this F0D8. We refresh that again, that will be closed. And then if we have this drop down here and we had a class of open, okay, nothing has happened because we haven't added styles. So if we have this nav bar drop down with an extra modifier class of open, then we can do display block. And now we can show that navigation there, the sub navigation. The same way here, we need to be able to select this and change that specific value or that drop down arrow um, just when the drop down is actually open. And all we have to do is just override this content FD0, uh, F0D8 to F0D7 and that would change it to open here, okay? Again, keep in mind, we're only overriding what we need to override. We don't need to add the font family, font weight, position absolute, any of those things because we already have them assigned on top. We're just overriding the content itself um, because we need it to look a little bit different when it's open versus when it's closed. Okay, now the same thing ha will, will be here, right? So ideally, this navigation right here, the, the nav bar would be closed right off the bat until they click on the button. And then when the button is clicked, then it will open it as well. So let's go ahead and do the nav bar here and select display none. So that's hidden. And then when they click on it, right, and you have a nav bar with a modifier of open, then it will be display block. And of course, in our case, we need to add that here, open, and then the navigation will show. This pretty much is the whole navigation for our mobile site that looks very much like what you would expect to see in a navigation for a mobile site and then as we expand it we expand it then we'll move into our um our tablet and into our desktop and so we're going to add more styles just so that we can change it to the other ones and then after that we're going to um we're going to work on our um JavaScript as well. So let's go ahead and move on to our styles, our responsive styles. So for responsive styles, we use what? We use the our media queries. All right. So let's go ahead and go down here and we're going to do add media screen and min width of um, 768 pixels. Come on, perfect. Now here, just to test out and know when it actually breaks, we can add our body and then background color to be something like red. And then at that point we know, okay, this background color right here is when we start working on that specific um, break point. See that still? And now we're in that break point. All right, let me go ahead and kill that. Refresh, everything should be fine, back to normal. So let's go ahead and add some styles to this. For our tablet, I don't really want to display this anymore. Do you see that? Because I don't want it to open up. See, I have enough space to kind of fit all of this in up to the top. So let's go ahead and hide that nav bar toggler. So we're going to select our nav bar toggler and we're going to say display none. And when we refresh our page, then that will be completely gone. Well, how about 
this navigation, we want it to be completely open all of the time. So we need to make sure that we have our nav bar, right, selected. And we say display block so that way it is always displaying, regardless of um, having that open or close tag, right? So we want to make sure it's always open. See, so it will be closed on the, on the mobile. And then when it goes to tablet, then the button disappears on the top. And then the navigation appears again. Okay. Now that we've done that, we want to make sure that our nav bar kind of instead of going vertically, that it goes horizontally, right? We want that about projects, recent projects, and then contact to be moving to the left of each other. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and select again our nav bar. And we're going to select the list items, nav bar, li, and we're going to do display inline block. This will help us select the list items and actually make them go into the same line as you can see right here. We need to fix these down here. You see this project one, two, three, four. We need to fix that. That, that needs to change. So what we're going to do is we're first of all going to select only the LI that are right immediate children of navbar. There you go. That's looking like a pop-up menu, just like what we wanted to do. Now, the next thing that we are going to do here as well is we're going to select that sub-navigation, that drop-down. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this drop-down UL. Okay, and here we're going to say position absolute. All right, now take a look at what's going to happen when this is there. Um, refresh. Now it moved out of the way and it went right underneath the recent projects tag. So wherever you have the drop down link, that's where it's going to go under. All right, now. Notice that it's behind the text. In order to correct that, because this is now a position absolute, we use something called Z index in order to let the elements know and kind of stack in front of each other or behind each other. Anytime you use absolute, you can use Z index to be able to layer elements. Now, in our case, we're going to do a Z index of one because one is greater than zero and zero is the default value. So we're going to do one. So now you can see that the, the, the sub menu kind of pop towards the front. And then we're going to say something like a width of 200 pixels here as well. And now just to make it a little bit wider, make it a little bit readable, more readable. All right. Now we need to bring this to the very top next to next to the logo rather than underneath it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our styles for our um, nav bar um, brand. And the ones that we're going to change are going to be our flex and max width. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go down here. And let's change it to something like um, navbar uh, brand, something like flex. Zero, zero, because again, we don't want it to grow. We don't want it to shrink and say something like 180 pixels and then a max width of 180 pixels. Okay. And then we need to select our nav bar down here and make it just about the same width as this. So I'll show you what we're going to do again is we're going to use flags. And then we do want it to, um, we'll keep it as um, zero for growing, one for shrinking. And then we're going to do a calculation of say 100% minus say 220, 220 pixels, okay? And then this same calculation is what we're going to use for our max width. 
And now by using that, then now you can actually move this element to the very top next to this other one here again, because we're saying this is 180 pixels and we're saying this one can occupy as much space as it wants to minus 220 pixels. So there should be a gap between these two elements. Now notice that the navigation is actually going towards the left. So we need to make sure that our uh, navigation the nav bar is aligned to the right. So text align right. And you'll see how this switches over a little bit more this way. All right, perfect. But notice also that our sub navigation changed. So we need to fix that as well. So now we have the drop down nav bar drop down UL and then text align left. Again, just kind of little tweaks here and there. Now we have this set up and this will be our same navigation for both our tablet and for our desktop. Um, and now we also have the styles for our mobile as well. All right. And the next thing I want to do is maybe add a little bit more spacing in here, just so that nothing they're they're not too crowded with each other. And, and what we're going to do is that we're going to do that on the base navigation styles up here. We added a padding of one REM, but let's do, go ahead and add a margin bottom of say 2.618 REM. Okay, by adding that, it adds a little bit more space between the navigation and the content itself in the bottom. If you want to, or your design works without having to have that in there, then um, please feel free to keep and without any margins below. Again, in my case, I am adding it there and I might switch it later on as I'm working on the styles for the rest of the site. But again, just kind of showing you different ideas on how to kind of create some spacing and keep things kind of relevant to each other and visually appealing as well. So now we have this drop down menu here. Let's go ahead and we're going to make sure that it's closed. Again, we don't want it to be open here, right? We don't want it, like when we click on it, we don't want it, like when it's just normal, when we refresh the site, we don't want this to open up. We only want it to open up when we click on it. So in order to do that, we need to actually work with um, JavaScript to be able to do some of those interactions. Now we could potentially do something like if I hover over the list item, then I can do display block and then the element would actually, you know, display below it. However, because I'm thinking on mobile first, that's why I'm only, I'm focusing on that click event. So now what we're going to do is we're, uh, going to search for jQuery CDN. So you can do jQuery CDN. And the one that I would suggest is the one that says CDN JS. And it has a list of all the different CDNs, which is, this is a content delivery network, which they hold this JavaScript file up there. jQuery is a library of JavaScript that allows you for better use and more uh, focus or um, in order to use JavaScript in, in multiple browsers. So back when jQuery was first created, um, there was a lot of discrepancies on how JavaScript behaved on Internet Explorer, Explorer, uh, Firefox, Chrome, etc., Safari. So you had to have something, you had to like, if you wanted to do a code in Internet Explorer, you had to do it one way. If you had to do it in Safari, it was a different way. In Firefox it was a different way. Now with this library, when it came out, it helped organize that a little bit better. And it also helped with some of the selections and interactions that were available at that time. We could potentially do this with vanilla JavaScript, meaning just plain JavaScript, but I found that jQuery is a little bit easier to grab your mind around, especially as you're beginning with um, just, you know, CSS and JavaScript and, and HTML because it uses the same CSS selectors and it's a little bit easier to understand. So let's go ahead and do the following. We're going to go to where it says um, jQuery 3.5.1 
If you have a newer version, feel free to use that there. And there's one that says copy script tag. We're going to copy that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the very bottom where we have our body right here. The closing of our body tag, and we're going to paste that in there, okay? We want it all the way to the bottom of, of our page because we don't want any interactions to load yet until the full site has loaded, okay? Sometimes JavaScript can take a little bit of time to load, which will look make your site look like it's way slower, and probably is if you have that much JavaScript in it, but in order to kind of show and kind of give the users an experience and know, okay, yeah, my site is, the site is loading. So then you could have your HTML and CSS load up first, and then your JavaScript can load in. So now that we've done that, we've imported this library in here, and we're going to use this throughout the rest of the site. We're going to also add our own JavaScript file so that we can add the interactions that we want to add. So we will actually do this script tag, source, and then we're going to select our folder that is JS, our JavaScript, forward slash, and then I'm going to call it app.js, okay? And then as I close it, again, it's not a self-closing tag. You can see that there. We don't have that file there yet. So let's go ahead into our JavaScript folder, right-click and select new file, and call it app.js. All right. So now that you have this, we no longer need this CDN here. It's loaded in here. Nothing has really happened. You could, if you want to test it, you can do something like alert inside of your app.js, open parenthesis, double quotes, and then something like hello world. Okay. And if you refresh your site, then you'll have the little alert that says hello world. And believe it or not, you already did your very first JavaScript just like that. This is, uh, this is a line uh, of code. So, JavaScript it works really much just like selectors on um, on CSS, and then they have something else called events. So what JavaScript does is it waits for an event to be triggered. Like for example, a mouse to move or a mouse to click or a key to enter a specific key or for a specific timed event, maybe you can say every six seconds do this, every two seconds do that. When we actually work into our uh, rotating banner, we're going to add some of those events just like, you know, if this event is happening, you know, if, you know, every six seconds, then do this one thing. So let's go ahead and add um, some markup here that we need to have some scripts here to let the JavaScript know that we want the code inside of it to run only after all of the markup is loaded on the page. The reason why we do that is because it uh, JavaScript really depends, if you're trying to do interactions with elements, you want to make sure that they're fully loaded before you start trying to add those interactions. If not, there will be a misfire and they won't actually trigger. So in order to do that with jQuery, we will use the dollar sign, which that actually represents jQuery. So dollar sign will be jQuery. And then we're going to do open parenthesis. And we're going to type the word function. Open, close parenthesis, open, co uh, close curly brackets. Okay. This one really is telling when the document is ready, everything has been loaded, then run whatever is inside of this. Okay. Now, this is something that you will probably have to memorize if you plan on using it. Um, but again, the more and more you do it, the easier and easier it becomes. Now, if you want to do comments, like, for example, multi-line comments, you can do something very similar what, like what you do in CSS. So you can do the forward slash, 
um, star and then star forward slash. And for example, here we're going to say something like navigation interactions. And then something like say describe what we're going to do. So for the first one, we're going to do the menu toggler. And number two is going to be the drop down toggler. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do a single line um, comment, then you can do two forward slashes. And then here say something like menu toggler. And underneath it, you can do two forward slashes and you can do drop down toggler. There you go. So that's the way that you would actually add comments into JavaScript. If you go now to our browser again and we refresh this, nothing's really happening because we haven't added anything here. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go over here to our markup and now we need to know what are we selecting. So when, when a user clicks on the anchor tag, we want to add a class of drop down uh, of open to our drop down li and if it's open add the class if it's closed then remove the class right so let's go ahead and add that here so drop down toggler step 1 listen for click on drop down anchor tag Right, two toggle the class of open on the drop down element. Okay, so we want it to toggle. So if it's there, then add, remove it. If it's not there, add it. Okay, the way that we will select this is we will do dollar sign open parenthesis. Again, this is going to be our selector. Dollar sign represents jQuery. This will be the same thing as me typing jQuery just like that. Okay. So, but this is kind of like a shortcut. If you ever work on WordPress, then you actually do have to spell out the word jQuery for it to properly work. But in our case, we're going to use the dollar sign here. All right. And then we're going to use double quotes. And then we're going to do dot drop down greater than anchor tag. Again, I want it only when I click on that child element, direct child element of that drop down. If you notice, it is it's very, 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 very similar to this right here. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and just copy this over. And then we're going to add an event listener. So when we click do on, open close parenthesis, double quotes, click, close the quotes, comma, function, open parenthesis, the letter E, close parenthesis, open close curly brackets. Okay, please if at any point feel free to pause the video so that you can copy this over. We will go over in more details and learn more about jQuery and JavaScript, not on this video though. I just wanted to create some basic interactions so that you can play with it. And then later on, if you want to look at some of these, I'll add some descriptions below as far as what we did today. So the way that this will read is for this element called navbar drop down child of a anchor tag that is a child of drop down which it belongs to navbar we would like to listen for when we click on that element okay now this e instead of the function represents an event the reason why I'm passing that event is because what's the purpose of an anchor tag? The purpose of an anchor tag is for you to click on it and take you somewhere. But in our case, we don't want it to take us somewhere. We want it to actually 
open up the menu. So we need to prevent its default behavior. So in order to do that, we have to pass on these, uh, these events right here. And we're going to do dot, I'm sorry, E dot prevent default. Okay. Notice that at the end of each one of these one single lines, I usually add a semicolon at the end so that it tells me, okay, that's the end of that line. Could I do it without? I absolutely can, but just to make it easier on the interpreter of the browser, I usually use the semicolon at the end. So now if I click refresh here and I click on this, then nothing really should be happening. It shouldn't take me anywhere because, again, I'm preventing the default value or the default behavior on that specific element there. Now, one of the things that you may want to do is check if you're actually listening, if it actually is working as you're clicking on that um, specific element that you've selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to Right, right underneath this, we're going to do console.log, and then we're going to do something like I was clicked. This lets the browser know to write this into the console anytime that we click on that specific element. So if we refresh here, and then we click F12 or we inspect, you can also go to the, you'll click on the console right here, and then click on recent event, recent projects. And then you can see here it says, I was clicked. And if you continue going to the right, you'll see that it actually tells you what file shows this, this message. So it's app.js and it's on line 17. If you look at line 17, it's right there. Again, the more and more I click on it, you see on the right hand side, that that continues going up and up and up and up and up in values there. All right, so now that I have done that, now I know that I am actually clicking on this and it is working as I click on it. So now I need to add or toggle the class of open to our dropdown element here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this. What this does, again, we have dollar sign, open, close parenthesis, and this inside of it. This right here is this up here is the selector that we have used to select that element, okay? This, this um, selector is this from up here, okay? So we do this dot parent, and why do we do that? The reason why we do that is because, again, our anchor tag here is an immediate child of this drop down li. Okay, so we're going to select that parent and then we're going to use a default, um, a little function that is created automatically on uh, jQuery that is part of the library. And we're just going to say toggle and then we're going to say open. Okay. I believe it's toggle class. We'll check that right now. And we set close that at the end. And we go to the browser and we refresh. Now we could go ahead and let's go ahead and do the following. We're going to inspect the element. See that right there? I want you to pay close attention to this class dropdown. When we click on it, it adds that class of open. When we click on it again, it removes that class of open. Open, not open. Open, not open. Open, not open. And this will behave the same way on our mobile. So we'll have to open the other one up first. So we'll we'll do that first before we go ahead and test it on mobile. But Trust me, it works, okay? So open, not open, okay? Now that we've done that, we need to do something very similar to our, um, our responsive or toggler, menu toggler. So for our menu toggler, 
what we need to do is we need to listen when somebody clicks on this button. We need to get the data target here, store it in one way or another, and then toggle that class of open into the element that is selecting. So main navigation, we want to toggle that class of open in here. So let's go back to our app.js and let's go in here. So let's go ahead and add the first step. Listen for a click on, and this one is navbar toggler. Come on. Navbar toggler two. We need to store the value found, um, the attribute, no, the property in the attribute called data target. Okay. And then number three use the attributes value to select the navigation it wants to affect. Okay, so let's do the same thing. This will be, look very similar just with, with one extra step. So now we're going to select our toggler. So again, dollar sign, open, close parenthesis, and then navbar toggler, okay on click and then we're going to do comma function open close parenthesis open close curly brackets okay again if you need to pause to review this please feel free to do so so we have this here now so now the next thing notice that i didn't pass the event because a button can just be clicked and then something happens. It doesn't really have a default value of taking you somewhere else. If it was like a submit button or something like that, then at that point, yes, we will probably add some, um, some prevent value or prevent default. But in this case, because it's just a regular plain vanilla button that doesn't do anything but just being a button, we're not doing any e prevent and default values here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to assign and create a variable. A variable is just a name that holds information inside of it. Think of it as a cup. Okay, you have a cup. In that cup, you can put nails, you can put water, you can put milk, juice, whatever, tea. Uh, you can put food, you can put nothing, right? You can keep it empty. So think about as a variable the same way as you have a cup. That cup can be uh, dumped out and then refilled with something new. Same thing with a variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign the variable with a word let. That lets, hold, lets us hold that variable just within this function that we created. Like I said, we'll talk more about JavaScript in the future. So bear with me. Right now, this is just a really quick crash course just so that we can do a course just so that we can do uh, this drop down here. So let toggler be the following. So we're going to use this dot attribute ATTR. And then the attribute that we're going to select is data target. Okay. And we can do the following. We can do console.long toggler. Okay. Now, if you look at this, the way that this reads is the data target attribute in the navbar toggler is stored into the toggler um, variable. Okay. Now, when we do console.log toggler, and we go to the browser, we refresh and we click on console and we click on it. See, it tells us the selector that we have picked right there. Again, that again is another verification for us to know that, okay, yes, we're selecting the right element. Now, the next thing that we need to do, I'm going to delete that. The next thing that we need to do is something very similar to what we did down here with a, with a toggle class. So we're going to do 
that. But instead of using the this value, we're going to use toggler because now we're getting the, the direct ID of who we want to influence now. And then instead of using parent, because we actually want to select the specific main navigation, we're going to do toggle class open. And now that we've done that, if we refresh the browser, we come over here, we hit the menu. Now that opens up again, because this is closed by default, then we can now open that up, close it, open, close. Again, I can keep it open, close this, and I can still reopen it and that will still continue being open. I can close this and I can make it bigger and it will still keep it open because we had it open before. And then again, open, close, open, close in there. Let's close this console. Let's see, we're making it expand so that it opens up. Same thing right there. And then here we could even add some spacing on the top. If we wanted to, we don't have to. But there you go. That's the way that we're going to use our JavaScript to be able to open and close our navigation and our drop down um, as well. So in this lesson, we talked about the styles for the main navigation. We also added some JavaScript to make them open and close. And again, a lot of these values, a lot of this information will be on the description below. I also will help and provide the, the logo that I use for this case. But if you have a logo that you would like to use, please feel free to do so and use it in that place as well. Um, so again, this is basic styles for uh, navigation that you can use on your site. If you have questions or you like for me to maybe cover a different um, layout or something like that for navigation, let me know and I might be able to cover it in a different video. Um, so in the meanwhile, please continue practicing. Look at what we just did right now. We selected an element and when we click on that element, then something else happens somewhere else. Think about uh, ways that you could apply that to your site. Think about ways that you can add some interactions to make them look and behave in a specific way that you want them to look and behave. Like I said, we are going to do some components in the future, creating a rotating manner, and also using this same effect right here, we're going to use um, create, say, like an FAQ component or something like that so that we can actually use some extra JavaScript in place. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add our uh, footer um, styles for our site. And after we add our footer styles, I want you to look at the site. We're pretty much done on how the site is going to look like with the main styles. The next thing is just actually building the website and kind of working on making the website look how we want it to look. Um, if you want to, you can also use um, your grid system if you want to align the content in the middle, like your navigation in the middle. Um, you can do that as well. I will maybe challenge you to do that, to add some style so that maybe the, the full blah uh, logo is on the middle of the, of the header and then underneath it you have the logo or still keep the full blah on the left and then figure out how to make these or arrange these on the right so that they can look um, a little bit better, more stylized as you're working on the style. If you were thinking of doing it as a box versus kind of keeping it fluid like I've just done. Um, so again, if you have questions, thoughts, comments, please let me know. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you have anything that I can help you with, please feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll be more than glad to help answer any questions you may have. Until the next time, happy coding.